In any trading card game, some cards are going to be rarer than others, and that's ultimately decided by how many are printed in proportion to other cards and how those cards are packaged. Taking Yu-Gi-Oh! as an example, you buy booster packs. These packs come in boxes of 24 in most cases, but then those boxes come in cases of 12. Because of the way this is organized, it's easy to look at how cards are distributed in terms of case ratios, taking an average of how many copies of a given card are printed over several cases. This is how we can tell what cards are short prints, cards that for their rarity are printed less than other cards in that same rarity slot. This also helps us understand the breakdown of rarities in the set, especially when they're exceptionally hard to find. This is great and all, but the average Yu-Gi-Oh! player isn't going to open case after case of product. Typically, you can expect somebody to buy a couple packs, or maybe even a box or two if they're willing to invest more money into the game. For this reason, it might not always make sense to think of these ratios in terms of cases. If you're buying boxes and you're after something like an elusive Starlight rare card which will appear once in every two cases, it could be more favorable to think of this as one in every 24 boxes. You may even want to take it a step further and say instead that these odds are one in every 576 packs. It's convenient, sure, but today we're going to take a deeper look at the weird world of case ratios and talk about a pretty counterintuitive pitfall that you may have even fallen for yourself. Self. Now, before we can get into the good stuff, let's go over some basics. If you flip a coin, you have a 1 in 2 chance of landing on heads, but that doesn't really guarantee that if you flip a coin twice that one of those is going to be a heads. When we say 1 in 2, we mean on average, not a guarantee. If we want to know the exact odds of getting a specific outcome out of multiple attempts like this, we can turn to this equation. Here, the capital P is the odds of getting the outcome you want after all is said and done. In our case, it's the odds of flipping heads. The lowercase p is the odds of getting the outcome you want from just one attempt. Here it's 1 in 2 or 1 half. And n is the number of attempts you've made. Since we flipped this coin twice, n is going to be 2. Crunching these numbers, we can see that the odds of flipping at least one heads after two flips is 0.75 or 75%. If you want to gut check this, just imagine all the different possibilities if you flipped two coins. You could either get heads heads, heads tails, tails heads, or tails tails. Of these four equally likely outcomes, three of the four of them have a heads, which, rest assured, is that same 75% figure. Now it just so happens that the odds of pulling a starlight rare out of any given case are the same as flipping a coin, so we're going to take that equation we filled in before and graph it to see what our odds look like if we go out and buy case after case. Your odds are going to steadily approach 100% in smaller increments each and every time. At one case we have our 50%, two cases at 75%, and so on. Okay, but maybe be rents due on the first, so instead of a case, you're just gonna buy a few boxes. That's okay, we'll just make the odds one in every 24 boxes, and we'll scale it so the number of boxes opened lines up with the totals if you bought them in cases. If all goes right, you should be on the same trajectory, just chopped up differently in a way that's easier to digest. So let's see how this new graph compares. Well, this is awkward. So what's going on here? To answer this question, let me begin with a scenario that's really a no-brainer. You're handed two boxes, each with two packs inside. Each box is guaranteed to have one copy of the card you want. Let's say, Moki Moki. You only have enough money for two packs, so do you buy the one whole box, or do you buy one pack from each box? This isn't a trick question, the answer is exactly what I hope you're all thinking, and that's, of course you're going to get one box. If you split it up and pick one pack from each box, you run the risk of leaving the packs behind behind that have the Moki Mokis, and that risk isn't there when you're buying a whole box. Now let's make it a little harder. Instead of each box having a Moki Moki, each box only has a 50-50 chance. And note that this doesn't necessarily mean that one of these will and one of these won't, just like flipping a coin twice doesn't mean that you'll flip one heads and one tails. So with this in mind, do you go all in and put your bets on one box, guaranteeing that you'll get the Moki Moki if you picked a good box, or do you take one pack from each box because pulling for more boxes means that you're more likely to pull from a good box even if it's not a good pack? Take just a second, pause the video if you have to, and think about what you would do in this scenario just going off of your gut instinct. Alright, let's calculate this. If you open one box, that's pretty simple. We already established going into the problem. It's a 50-50 chance. But let's think about the other scenario now. Pick your first pack. There's a 50-50 chance of you pulling from a good box, 
And if you do, there's a 50-50 chance that the pack you choose from that box is going to have that Moki Moki. Multiplying these together as you do, and you're going to succeed on your first pull 25% of the time, or 1 in 4. If you do, great! You have what you want, we don't even care what's in the other pack. But 75% of the time, you are going to have to open that next pack from the other box. And this pull has the same odds as the first one. 50-50 on getting a good box, 50-50 on getting a good pack in said good box, grand total of 25%. So you have the 1 in 4 chance of pulling well in your first pack, but you're only going to need that 1 in 4 chance in the second pack when you don't pull well initially, meaning that what's in the second pack is only relevant 75% of the time. Because of this, when we multiply everything out and add it all together, we only get a 7 out of 16 chance. You're more than 6% less likely to pull a Moki Moki this way than if you just took a whole box and accepted your coin flip odds. This scenario, although seemingly different, follows the exact same principles as the first box where we had the guarantee. Now, let's go back to our Starlight Rare example and talk about opening cases versus opening boxes. When you open 12 boxes in a case, those boxes are connected. If your case is one that has a Starlight, each box you open will have higher and higher chances until you find it. But if you open box by box independent of one another, you don't have that luxury. If your boxes aren't from the same case, you're doing yourself a disservice just like the person who took one pack from each box trying to pull that Moki Moki. Now you might be asking, what if I open two two, three, even four boxes, but they are from the same case. Well, what then? Looking at this graph, there's only a result plotted for one whole case. The other curve here applies to completely random independent boxes. Well, let's fill in these blanks. It may be tempting to fill them in this way and smooth out the curve, but this creates some problems. Look right here at x equals one twelfth of a case, or one box. Here, the case model and the box model still have different chances, but if you think about it, it's just one box. The box odds shouldn't be worse until you start opening multiples, because that's when you start having the opportunity to open these products from different sources. What actually turns out to be correct is to connect these dots with a straight line. Notice if you do this, then our odds line up perfectly with both models when opening one box, and that's exactly what we want. Here's the equation I used to fill these blanks in. This isn't anything I looked up or found somewhere, this is an equation I put together myself just using what I know. So if you guys want to see where this comes from, let me know in the comments and I might make another video explaining it. If you want to mess around plugging in numbers, have at it. So hopefully what you'll take from this is that case ratios are weird, and if you mess with them, it can actually affect your pulls. If you want to buy sealed product in multiples, make sure that those multiples were packaged together. If you buy boxes, get them from the same case. If you buy packs, it's the same principle, get them from the same box. If you don't do this, you're actually decreasing your chances of getting those rare pulls that you're looking for. If you have any follow-up questions, let me know down in the comments below. If you think I did a good job, leave a like, and if I did a really good job, subscribing to the channel is the best way to tell me that you want more. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.